Hello, my party people. Hello, it's Randy for Thunder Horse Ascendant. I'm here today with project number four. Project number four from Bargain Beadbox Woodland Whimsy. So here is my little design that we're going to be working on today. So I am excited. This is already project four. We're cruising right along now that I got back on the schedule. So if you are new here, this is a mini series that I do every month. Um, and it is with the Bargain Beatbox where we do an unboxing and then a plan video. And then we make all the projects that we make in that plan. So what you're seeing here, these little designs are plans that we made during the first, second video. So let's pop down to the mat, get this party started. Okie dokie party people, here we are down on the mat. So I know that this probably looks a little bit crazy town, but in my head it works out. <laughs> this is our project um, number four. It says we need needles and wire or wildfire. So um, I'm actually going to use beading wire today. So this is just, uh, what is this? This is 0.3 millimeter gold. I just... This is like from Walmart or something. You can use whatever you want. I'm just going to try a beading wire because I feel like we're always using wildfire, which is not bad. I mean, wildfire is good. But I feel like this <clears throat> design might need a little bit more structure. And to be quite honest with you, I don't want to have to go back through and like reinforce it, the whole thing. Because uh, sometimes I'm lazy. So, <laughs> so here we are with the beading wire size 11 seed beads I have these guys they're like a brownish bronze color and an old faithful clasp I have a red bronze old faithful clasp and that is what we will be adding today in addition to we should probably get our beads out here uh, in addition to these uh, crystal beads and the strand of the bicones Okay, so they're not exact same color, but these did come in the box. Now, these are the two that I'm going to be using from the box. <clears throat> and I think that I'm going to use, I'm going to add a couple of things. I'm going to add these spacers, these metal spacers. These are actually in rose gold, but any spacer I think would work. I just am like, there's a lot of sparkle here. <clears throat> we need to have some spacers going on. In addition, to add a little bit of um, pop to these here, as you will remember when I got them, I was like, oh, these two colors are really not really my favorite, if you remember that. So I did get grab up this piece, this Preciosa strand. So this is from um, our website. We do have other Preciosas on there if you need some. Um, they are... Four millimeters, 31 pieces um, of Precios crystal. This one is just happens to be in smoked topaz. So I'm just like, okay, that that'll work. It's kind of got this whole bronzy situation going on. So any hoot, that's what we got working with us today. So let's clear this off and we'll get started. So I'm going to put this over here. <clears throat> so this design that I made is kind of a, let's just, I'm going to talk while I get these things ready. It's kind of not exactly a plan, <laughs> but it's good enough. In my head, I have an idea of what I want to do and that's all that matters. So here's our 31 Preciosa crystals. Now I don't know if we'll need 31 of them. That seems a little bit excessive. And then I have um, my size 11. We'll probably really only need like uh, like 20 beads probably. Maybe a little more than that. So nothing crazy. I have my spacers. Now I don't know how many are here. But we're literally only going to use probably like I don't know, 20 of those. And then I have our crystal strands. 
and our bicones. So let's get these ready to go. That seems pretty good for now. Get these other ones back in the bag. And really, I'm only originally I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll encapsulate these, but I really think I'm only gonna need like 10 beads or something. Depends on, I guess I'll get a few more. Put that over here. Okay. Now I am going to need oh, a crimp bead. So I'm using wire. Uh, I need a red bronze crimpy. Here we go. Just the two. Okay. And then I think that's it. So these are the items that I'm going to use. And I'm going to be using, again, this 0.3 millimeter, just little Walmart wire. So this is not like a strong wire, okay? So this is, you know, if you have some of that seven strand wire rolling around, or maybe even some of that 19 strand, although I think that might not be flexible enough. I wanted to use a not so strong wire on purpose, because I want it to be a little bit flexible, almost like a string would be, but we're trying something new. So I'm thinking we're, I'm just going to make this the length of my mat because it's a bracelet. It doesn't really need to be that much. Okay. So, but I'm scared. So maybe like two feet, maybe a foot and a half. Let's do a foot and a half because I, I don't want to be working with a whole bunch Okay, let's see here. Two feet is 24 inches, so 18 inches. 18 inches should be enough, I would think. Okay, so I'm going to cut 18 inches. I got that all twisted up. There we go. I'm going to cut 18 inches three times. Because yes, we are going to be using three strands all at once. Because you know how I like to do that. Okay. Do 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 do. Okay, so when I was originally seeing this design, um, I flipped through a book that I had, and I will, uh, I'll put a picture of it at, maybe at the end, so you can see which book it was. It was like Bead Easy or something, um, although prior to today I've never made one, um, but it looked pretty easy. So, I've been kind of trying to experiment with my bicones that they send in the box, just because... Why not? You know, broaden, broadening my horizons, whatever. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on two bicones. Oh, I should probably make this easy for you guys. Let me get a pen. Uh, paper. Okay. So, let's make these guys over here B and these guys A. Okay? So, these light colored ones are A. These darker colored ones are accent beads are B. Make that easy. So, I am going to put on my string two of A. Two of the bicones they sent in the box. I'm going to use all three strands. I'm going to put on two. 
Okay. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to zoom you guys in for real. Let's see what I'm doing here. Okay, then I'm going to put on my crimp bead onto all three strands. And this is how we start, and this is also how we're going to end. I mean, I think you guys have been around here long enough to know that. <clears throat> Basically, um, we're going to crimp right into this Old Faithful clasp. We're going to bring all three strands around. We're going to run these strands back through. the crimp bead and then also through these two beads because I like to do that because it makes me feel safe and that's the only reason I have these two beads on here okay now you're just gonna push that up there make sure all the strands are straight so there's not any bubbles out here in your uh, your wire okay easy peasy and then I'm going to go ahead and crimp it. So to crimp it, you're just going to come in. You're going to... This one wire is bugging me a little bit. You're going to come in and you're going to crimp. checking it. I'm a little guy. I'm just going to give him a squeeze just for because I feel like it. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to take the trimmer and we're going to trim off these excess tails and we're going to trim them very short to the bead. As close as we can get it. Get rid of that. All right y'all we're on our way now. Okie doke. Easy peasy. This bracelet is really not that hard um, from the pictures that I looked at. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We have two on here. This is our starting point. Again, this is how we're going to start and finish our, our bracelet. So when you get to the end of the bracelet, you're going to want to... Um, once you get done with your little component, you're going to want to just put two bicones and then finish it. Pretty easy. So we're going to split these into three. So for this first one, we are going to put A, B, because these are the letters of the alphabet, A and B and a seed bead. Now these are size 11 seed beads. You can use 15s if you want to, or smaller, bigger, whatever you want to do. This is just what I'm using because this is what I have. Okay, so I think for the teaching purpose of this right now, I'm just going to do this one step at a time until I get going. So on the next strand, I'm going to do the same. A, B, C, B. Bring that down. On the next strand, the last one, same thing. A, B, C, B. Okay. So then, once I have this, I just put this here so my my camera focuses easier because I'm going to zoom you in so you can really see this. So I like to think of this as this is part of like one, I don't know what you want to call it, segment, one component, one section, whatever you want to call it. This is all part of the same section. So you're going to re be repeating these steps, okay? So important to note. 
So with this strand, the same strand, okay, coming out of here, you're going to scoot your little seed bead down and you're going to go back through bead B, which is your detail bead or your brown bead, this one. Just through one of them, not through all of them, just through one. You're going to grab a hold of your wire and before you pull it tight, make sure that you scooch this down so it's tight, right? It's close as it'll go. And then you're going to pull this tight. So now you should have this. Okay? You're going to do that with the next one. You're going to get a hold of your string. Doesn't really matter which way you go about this. You're going to pull your seed bead down out of the way with the same string that's coming out. Go in through the detail bead, bead B. Get your loop under control. Pull it down. You can pull it tight down by pulling the one that's coming out, right? So put, pull it down. Then you're going to tighten that by bringing that seed bead around. Tighten. Then we're going to do the last one. Get the seed bead out of the way. Come around with the tail. Go in through bead B or your detail bead. Just that one. Get your loop under control. Pull it down. And pull it tight. Okay, you don't want to Hercules it or nothing. You don't want to be cracking any of these beads. These beads are glass, so if you pull on them enough, they're going to break. Okay, but it should look like a crazy chicken foot. You got a crazy chicken foot with three toes. Okay, that's what you got. Crazy chicken foot. Okay, please comment in the comment section. Crazy chicken foot. <laughs> Let me know you're out there. Okay, so once you have a crazy chicken foot, <clears throat> then what you're going to do, okay, I'm going to turn off. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come back to your bead pile and you are going to put on a bead A onto each strand. So that is this one, bead A. So put bead A on there, bead A on here. Okay, don't poke yourself in your eye with your wire. Bead A on the third one. Okay, easy peasy. You're going to gather all of your wires. This part doesn't really, does, it's not super important, okay? You're just going to kind of pull them down a little bit. None of this really matters right now. But as you can see, this has already created the shape. Uh, where they're fitting in like a little cube. You see that? Schnazzy. So now, once you have those on there, you're going to take all three of your strands. You're going to grab a bead A. And you're going to lock that chicken foot in. Lock it in. Pull it down tight. Okay, so it makes those little butters, those little chicken toes stick out. There you go. And then I go a step beyond. I'm going to pull individual wires. Not super tight, but just enough. Okay, so it's going to really create this kind of square shape with all them bicones. And now this is the fun part. Now here you could do whatever you wanted. This is, this is again, still part of one section, one segment. We're not done with this segment, even though we have the chicken foot done. So now we have this A bicone on. Now you can do whatever you want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spacer. See, this is why I wanted to use the spacers. I'm going to use all three strands and I'm going to go through this spacer. And I'm going to put on one of these 
these are the six millimeter crystals that they provided in the box. Smashing, smashing. Get that on there. Then we're gonna I'm gonna do another spacer. And then I'm gonna do a bicone. This bicone completes the segment or the section and starts the beginning of the next section. Okay. So when I pull this all this down, this is what we got. This, not including this one bead here. This is one section. So now, all we're going to do is repeat it. So, for those of you who've been beading a while and you're like, all right, Randy, we got this, let me show you a little trick. So, there's your, there's your first step, okay? This is the same steps, the only step we're going to do, we're step, step, stepping it with the chicken foot, right? Who knew there'd be so many, so many chicken references in this video? All right, so now what we do is we start again on our next chicken foot. It's probably not called a chicken foot, but that's what I'm calling it. So what do we do? We take A and B and a seed bead on this strand. Now, here's for you little advanced beady folk, okay? So now instead of doing them individually, putting all the beads on and then possibly losing some, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put those on there and then I'm just going to go on with the chicken foot. So I'm, I'm going to take that same strand that's coming out and I'm going to go through just the brown bead, just the detail bead. I'm going to get my loop under control. I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to lock it in with that seed bead. Okay. So I'm already working on part of my chicken foot. Now you don't have to do this, but you're going to make a few of these sections and you might find this to be helpful moving forward because I dropped a lot of beads. I always drop beads, it's a thing. So <clears throat> next up, the next one. So we do A, B, seed bead. Now let me tell you a thing. I recognize that these beads over here are, uh, they got like kind of a bigger side and kind of a smaller side, even though it's not really that noticeable. I am not putting them on any certain way. I'm just putting them on however they come out. Okay, so now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to get the seed bead out of the way. Come down here through the detail bead, just the detail bead. I'm trying to watch in the monitor to see if this is blurry. There we go. Just the detail bead, get the loop under control, tighten it down, make sure it's down there. When I say down there, it should be lining up here with this one. Okay, and then lock it in. So you can see this one, I got a little extra string. You see that? Right there? It wasn't all the way down. That's fine. We can pull the seed bead out a little bit and make sure it's down there. And then do it again. Okay? They don't have to be super perfect, you know? Because, I mean, it's still going to work. But it does help if they're down there. Makes the little ball look a little more, like, put together. Because it's supposed to kind of look like a, be a, seed, a beaded bead almost. Okay, last one. So we're going to do A, B, seed bead, bring it down. Get the seed bead out of the way. Go through the detail bead. your loop under control. Pull it tight. Alright. 
And we have a chicken foot. <laughs> so there's our chicken foot. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to put one A bead on each strand. Now I'm going to show you a thing with this. So we got A, A, okay, over here. A, okay. So now when you do it this way, like I did them all in one section, sometimes the beads, sometimes the beads are, will get in the way or they'll get kind of wonky. So you kind of just have to maneuver them to make sure they're making this little shape. And all you do is just push that down. Now I will say, when you do it this way, it doesn't necessarily do that for some reason, but uh, it can get a little, you just want to make sure they're not tangled up. I mean, I feel like that's something you might do anyways. There's a gnat. Get out of here. We're trying to do stuff. Go away. <laughs> so then I take all three strands. I put on my bicone bead. Bead A. Bring it down and this is where we are locking that into place we're going to pull individually on the strands getting rid of some of that slack this is what we got and now we're going to repeat whatever pattern you put in the middle so for me it was spacer Crystal, spacer, and then this is the magic bead that ends and starts your next section. And to make sure everything is lined up. And there we are. Two down. Okay, so I'm thinking for my wrist, just based on the length here, because uh, I think I think I'm gonna have to do six little clusters six or seven clusters if I do six and this is just based on experience if I do six usually like dependent on the size and everything of of stuff it'll fit the way I like it to fit it'll fit tightly but comfortably and not move around a lot on my wrist which is a six and a fourth inches so I generally be like oh, okay there's six inches this is about an inch for each section maybe an inch and a little bit more, so about six, right? Maybe seven. So I'm just going to repeat this. I'm not gonna bore you with all of the details. I'm just going to go ahead and create the rest. Um, but I would say if you're going to do a larger size, um, maybe if you have a seven inch wrist, maybe consider thinking about doing seven clusters, eight inch wrist, eight clusters, and two inches before you're to the end put it around your wrist like this so you can kind of guide and see where your two inches is going to be because you may be using a different clasp than i am you may be using a toggle it's larger it's not going to take up this is a pretty small when you use an old faithful it you know you're going to need more beadwork than you are this guy okay so take those things into consideration and also um when you get to the end, we are going to be doing this same situation here. So you're going to start paying attention to the end about two inches from the end. You're going to do your last cluster and then instead of doing this, you're going to just put two bicones so they match before you crimp into the other end. 
So this is it. This is the sections. You're going to do the section anywhere between six and eight times. You sh and this, this is what we got going on. So I'm going to jump off camera and I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All right. I think it just started raining. <laughs> I think it just started raining, you guys. So here we are. All done. Got all my chicken feet. Oh, put this here. See? So there we go. Pretty good out of 10. I really like the way that it turned out. Super cute. So I did end up doing um, six clusters. And I'll put it on here so you can see what it looks like. Hold on, I can do it. Oh, get on there. There we go. So there we go. There is what it looks like on. Super cute. So because the clusters only have three sides, um, when I'm wearing it, they're not poking me because the other side is flat. There's no pokey part on the other side. And for the most part, um, it's not like super scratchy or anything. Um, got my little clasp. So this, this is how I do like to wear my bracelets. I like them to be tighter. I don't like them to move a whole lot. Um, I will say that the wire is a little stiffer than I'm used to, but I'm not mad at it. I actually think that it's pretty okay. I mean, like it's pretty good. I'm used to a wildfire, so, you know, that is what it is. Um, I will say when I take it off and I kind of lay it out, I might have to maybe hang it up so it can kind of, you know, make friends with each other. Because when I, when I do lay it out, it gets a little scrunchy, but that could be my crimping as well. Scrunchy meaning like it kind of, you know, is wire, so it's like, you know, unlike wildfire. But for the most part, when I have it on, very cool. I like it a lot. So there we go. That is... Project number four. Oh, yeah. It's on the liner between six and a fourth and six and a half. Perfect for me. So, yeah. Anyhow, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me show you the design so you can see, see this craziness of what is in my head and what is not in my head. There you go. So this was the original design. However, I did modify it based on um, a design that I saw in um, Easy Beading, which I am going to add a photo of the book here at the end so you can know which one it is if you're interested. Um, but prior to today, I had not made one. So this is my first one. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you are, don't forget to give me a like, a comment. Let me know how you're feeling about it. And also, if you're new to Bargain Beadbox, um, or if you're considering getting Bargain Beadbox as a subscription, don't forget that um, you can use, if you're new, you've never had a subscription before, um, during checkout, you can use code THUNDERHORSE86 at checkout. Save two buckaroonies off of your order. Um... And yeah, the price did just go up to, I think it's $22.50 a month. That includes the shipping. But yeah, totally worth it in my opinion. Let's just take a look-see at what the next project is, because some of us cannot remember. Oh, it's earrings. Project 5 is going to be earrings, it looks like. I do not remember these designs, but maybe when I see the beads, I will. <laughs> I can see my glasses. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope you're having a lovely, spectacular, amazing beating day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.